Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we have former Bachelorette Emily Maynard calling out a horrific troll and then the other Bachelor alumni coming to her defense. We're going to go through this right now. As you guys know, we love it here when alumni or influencers call out trolls who think for whatever reason that they can talk to people in an inhumane way. Well, like begets like and the Law of Attraction will have a troll slammed every once in a while. Do me a solid, follow me on Instagram at dneals for stand-up show update seattle is going to be august 24th tickets are on sale link in the bio also patreon.com slash dave neal for behind the scenes bonus content 10 a.m this morning and every afternoon bachelor rush hour the hit podcast so bachelor alumni call out horrible troll emily maynard actually shared what the troll said you might be new to the channel or only started watching the last couple of years emily is kind of like she's i don't know if she's on the mount rushmore of alumni as far as how notable their influencer world has been after the show but she's been able to do very well for herself and she's the highest paid bachelorette of all time made a quarter million dollars when she was a bachelor so we're going to get into what she had to say about that troll experience but what we have to remember is bachelor alumni and any alumni from tv shows they have to deal with things that the normal human would not they lose their sense of anonymity they can't just go out you know they get uh they, they get screen grabs uh shamed when they're on a dating website so many micro uh different uh things go on out there here's courtney robertson who i just interviewed over this past weekend on driving with dave explaining what it was like to deal with a stalker um, but yeah, I had somebody break into my place. Oh my gosh. I had multiple police reports filed and, um, what, do you, what do you mean they broke into your place? Yeah. So they, they cracked in through the window and, um, I wasn't there at the time and there was money on the table. They didn't take anything. And I, and there had been like, this is the same stalker. I had like two incidents before that I reported and outside my window and <sighs> yeah, yeah. Scary. Creepy, but I know, I know, but oh, nobody cares about that, but. It I mean, was a it's, little creepy as a single girl living in Santa Monica. I think people do care. I think people just don't know how bad it can get for some. And also, I do want to apologize for my lack of buttons on this shirt. It was a hot day, and I was, like, airing it out, and I forgot to bring it back home for the ladies. You know what I mean? So my apologies there. That video, <clears throat> excuse me, is available on Driving with Dave on the Dave Neal Show, so you can go check that out. It's our other channel, The Dave Neal Show, and you can get all of our driving interviews. You're going to love that one. A lot of tea there about um, Ari and even Nick. She throws him under the bus. Very interesting stuff. You can go check that out. But today we're going to get into Emily Maynard and what actually went down here. So she posted this Instagram uh, store uh, post with uh, with the troll saying should have stopped at five. Now when I saw this, I didn't quite understand what was going on. I knew it was in reference to her children and I go, why does she care about this? Why is, is this a big deal? I didn't quite understand. And we're going to get to that in a second. You will understand in a moment. Emily said pretty sure I'm going to think better of this lady and we'll end up deleting it. But this comment hurt my heart in a way that I really can't get past. Uh, G and Nick, just remember that even though you may not post your name on your Instagram, it doesn't mean you can post whatever hateful thoughts go through your head. Hopefully one of your friends or family members in Saskatoon will see this and have a serious talk with you about love and kindness. You are a mother. You should be ashamed of yourself. <clears throat> So all Emily did here, and again, this isn't doxing. Doxing is when you share someone's address. All Emily did here was say, I know your name, I know where you live, and I know that you're a mom, and shame on you. And then the audience can go and find her, and immediately this uh, lady uh, uh, privated her Instagram account, and uh, she claims her Instagram was hacked, which again is just rubbish because what a weird thing to do if you hack someone's Instagram. So what's the big deal here? And again, there she is. There, there was her Instagram before she went private. That's that's who it is, you know? And I believe we should live in a world where everyone stands by their words and, and you know, like if you're going to say something online, people should know who you are. Doesn't mean they need to know what address you're at. No one's calling for like stalking or things like that. Just saying, I know this is Kelly McKinnon or whatever the hell her last name is. I made that last name up. You know what I mean? Just, it's, it's a fair fight when that happens here. So what actually went down? Let's go to Emily's other page here. I didn't realize this. <clears throat> Excuse me. She said she should have stopped at five because Emily's latest born child has Down syndrome. Here's the video that Emily shared that caused the other part, the, that lady Kelly to say she should have stopped at five. It's a beautiful video of Emily feeding her child. Child is laughing. It's a beautiful video, hands down. No question about it. Um, and what people who have kids with Down syndrome 
say is that their children teach them the most unconditional love they ever have received and there's so much that can there's so much joy and happiness that can come from um uh those that experience what 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 can be a very challenging um experience which is having a kid with down syndrome they have obviously plenty of different issues that come with that uh, scenario than if someone who hadn't had uh, um uh, down syndrome or and any other amount of um uh, things that could affect your childhood and your life, right? I think we can all agree with that. So anyway, when we go back to the post here, you see all the comments from a lot of the parents of, you know, parents, uh, p people, bachelor alumni that have kids. Michael A., good for you. Why people think they can get away with this type of behavior is beyond me. It's time people realize that they're not as anonymous as they think and exposing their hate to the public is a real possibility. Amanda Stanton says the video you posted today brought the biggest smile to my face. Can't even imagine what a truly sad person you must have to be to have any other reaction than that. And then Bachelor Data said, don't delete this. I don't understand why people think they can get they can say whatever they want online these days and get away with it. Keep it up. Yeah, the truth is one of the greatest sources of uh, or, or, or reasons why people troll out there is because it's some weird and twisted self sabotaging therapy that they do it's their way of letting off steam you know when you used to yell in your car after someone cuts you off or you're having a bad day now people are going online and they're spewing that vitriol onto others and that's not a good thing that's not healthy for the troll it's not healthy for the receiver Caitlin Bristow said what a disgusting person watching that video today brought me so much joy and I love your beautiful family just because you have a platform doesn't mean these words don't hurt and good for you for calling her out she needs to be held accountable and learn a lesson and it's not and, and again I said I said this um uh, by exposing the troll, you're not only exposing them, you're helping out all those that are cyberbullied and dealing with microaggressions from haters. Troll patrol in full effect. Yeah, it's not just... It, for too long, influencers were kind of told, don't acknowledge the trolls, don't acknowledge the haters. And they've let them grow unfettered. And I actually think it's better to call out as many as you want. As you know, we've talked about Brianna Madia. Media, and she not only called out her trolls, she hired a private investigator to find out who they are and where they live. So she called out her trolls and said, "So and so is a teacher in Florida. Uh, Shannon is a, um, uh, a th mental health therapist in Maine." And she literally didn't say where they lived, their address, or anything. She just said their names in the states and cities that they live in. And some people said, "Oh, this is too far. You're, you know, you're fueling the problem." But I think it actually normalizes the fact that. If someone were to heckle me and I'm like, I know that you're Joni's kid from Portland, Oregon. You know what I mean? It almost, if they know that you know who they are, they might actually be quiet. That's why in small towns, you don't see people honking the horns because they all know each other. And that's okay. It's nice to be polite and, 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 and not anonymous. So anyway, Brianna did a good job. And she's, I think she's got like a documentary in the works. I think she's going to be talking about the trolls that she is exposing. But she made this video right here where she broke down the psychology of why the trolls do what they do and what they all say afterwards. Because I've had to deal with this. And generally, when I've had to deal with a troll, afterwards, people go, oh, I didn't know you were actually going to read what I wrote. Oh, I, now that you mention it, I actually... And they always backpedal. They always backpedal and kind of are like, I'm, I'm one of your biggest fans. And you know what they also do? They also tell you when you know i was going to support your patreon but now i'm not i'm i was going to come to a stand-up show but now they 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 kind of try to take some sort of financial thing from you here's what brianna had to say hi so i've been wanting to do this for a while but i needed a minute to come down after the initial trauma resurgence of coming out with everything about the reddit wake of that situation i did get um a few apologies, um, apology emails. And I feel like they are a study, like a psychological study in what is so bizarre about being on this side of your phone screen, the side with the blue check mark and the you're a public figure, so it doesn't matter. The similarities between these emails and messages or dms whatever it was that they sent are eerie and so i have broken down the general consensus from all of these emails into what i've called like five categories i'm not a masochist just doing this for fun there is 
something a lot bigger is coming. But anyways, um, documentary maybe. <clears throat> the first category, it is a key and is mentioned in every single email without question. I call it I was a fan. Here's a few snippets. I followed and looked up to you for so long that now knowing I was a part of something so f***ing gross and hurtful is gut-wrenching. I've been so inspired by your unapologetic independence and search for truth. And another one says, I came for the dogs and stayed for the dogs. They brought me so much joy. Before I joined the Reddit, I signed up for a trip to Indonesia. Another, I started out as a casual fan. I love seeing you take the dogs through the technical can. And then many of them go on to mention, or obviously it's just implied, that I somehow disappointed them. And so I did something, I said something. So how this relates to, <clears throat> excuse me, how this relates to Emily's post is that fans generally start out, or at least trolls start out as fans. I followed you because I liked X, Y, and Z. Then through some form of jealousy, or maybe even a, a form of psychotic addiction that fanhood becomes possessive and then through that possession you want that person to be perfect no influencer no one's going to be perfect right and so through all of that and we've and we've shared some of them from our our own experience here where people go i was a fan of yours but you've changed you are this person now when you used to be that and it's like i think this is more about you the troll than it is about me the content creator but Brianna is doing a good job here of finding, and again, this this stuff should be studied more, you know what I mean? But she's doing a good job of finding the fact that they all say they were a fan. Now, what led them to be disappointed? And that was just suddenly they went from fan to believing I deserved this or that it was fun to participate in. Uh, and that leads me to the second category, which is I didn't know you were real. So here's a few of those snippets. The truth is, I stayed for the drama, and in my mind, I thought of you and your friends as reality TV stars. People who willingly and purposefully put themselves out there to be analyzed. Another says, I thought you were like a reality TV star thriving in the drama. The mob mentality, this is another one, the mob mentality was real, and during COVID, it was easy to pick on the Moab Kardashians rather than asking myself why I was upset. I was numb to the toxicity... Another one says, I never thought you'd ever see any of it. I didn't think you'd notice another piece of celebrity gossip. Uh, someone else wrote, I would occasionally just read it for entertainment, but calling such gross commentary on your life entertainment makes me feel sick to my stomach now. Thanks for at least recognizing that in the same sentence. Um, the third category, again, these are themes throughout every single one. This one sucks the most for me for some reason i call it i didn't know it was that bad so someone writes at the time of my posting last year i didn't realize what i did would harm you in fact it wasn't until seeing katie's initial post that i realized the gravity of the situation you've been dealing with i had no idea this is another one i had no idea that anyone from reddit stalked you or contacted your employers or the truly horrible things they did Someone says, if I had realized the true effect it was having on you, I would never have participated. Another one wrote, I had no idea people tried to get your dogs taken away. With the whole Moab city code thing about number of pets, I would have left right then. If I had known, because I didn't know. I didn't know it was that bad. And then there's one that I kind of could have predicted but is still interesting as a common thread and I call this I was bullied too so there's I experienced bullying as a child I myself was a victim of cyberbullying, and I know how harmful it is and how inescapable it is just how trapped and frustrated it can make you feel says a person apologizing for participating yeah. Someone else says, my younger sister was tormented in high school. Um, this feels important to call out because what is wrong with us? Why do we treat people the way we would never want to be treated again? I don't understand it. 
I don't understand it. And she goes on and on. And, you know, the truth is it hurt people hurt people. Uh, most people that suffer or most, most abusers were abused themselves. And it doesn't make it right, but there is a system there. And even though it's not right, it's important to see the framework for what exists so that it can be corrected. How will it be corrected online if there's no consequences? Well, the truth is, it won't. It won't be corrected without consequences. And even though Brianna's story is different from Emily's, Emily's story might be more of a one-off troll, it's all the same It's all the same stuff, folks. It's the same video. And, you know, we police our audience pretty good. And you guys make sure, you know, we, we kind of police each other, right? And I don't think we have anyone in our audience that's ongoing uh, snark or ongoing trolling or things like that. But that's because we're a smaller crowd. I mean, you guys have seen it when we get our live streams to a certain size sometimes. We just can't possibly catch all of the bad behavior. And we try to keep it as non-anonymous as possible. I try to know your names. I try to know who I'm talking to. But, of course, we can't go all the way there. We have 70,000 subscribers. So you're not going to get to know everybody. Um, and people fall through the cracks. But... But I do believe in the idea of exposing hate. And again, not everybody because, you know, you, you'd, you'd, probably, uh, you'd probably hurt yourself just as much in trying to expose others. But in certain instances where you can possibly redeem someone or have a teachable moment, I think it's great. So I'm very proud of Emily for having the guts to, to stick up for her family right there. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Tonight's live stream is going to start at 7 p.m. East Coast. The Bachelorette episode is 8 p.m. It moves back to its original time. So we'll be live one hour before and directly after tonight's episode. Come check us out then. Then we'll be back with more content right after this.